What's up, Valorant fans? Welcome back to the Valorant Report. Hopefully your go-to spot for competitive Valorant esports recaps at my hold shift. And today we're talking about the continuation of the FaZe Clan Invitational, part of the Ignition series for North American Valorant, in which we've gotten through the group stage. This was our first look at the playoffs. And for tournament coverage-wise, this would be one of the first broadcasts in which we're going to be able to see every single match in the playoff bracket. Double elimination, best of three all the way through until we get to the grand finals, which is a best of five. Today, we got through our opening rounds of the upper bracket as well as our first rounds in the loser's bracket. So we'd figure out who would go home with a T8 next to their name and who still lived to fight another day. Looking at the bracket, our first matchup on broadcast was Sentinels versus FaZe. This is a matchup where yesterday during the group stage, we talked about how FaZe came out a little bit slow, and they had to pick things up if they want to try to keep pace with the Sentinels. That would not be the case, as Sentinels would be able to find 12 rounds defensively straight on bind, making FaZe look a little bit silly as far as how they are approaching their attack executions. But at least FaZe were able to sneak together a couple of defensive rounds on the second half, making it a reasonable 13-5 still in favor of the Sentinels. Ascent would be up next, FaZe would start on defense, and they would do pretty well, getting an 8-4 edge after the first half after some great plays came out from Marv and Raucous. But the big problem is FaZe's overall newness when it comes down to this roster and their competitive experience in whole, as their attack coordination is really not quite there. Got shut down completely on the second half, as it would be a 13-8 for the Sentinels in 2-0 fashion, which is essentially what we predicted there. You see the score and a big surprise here. Envy versus Cloud9. And I said that Envy's best chance was to try to find wins on maps like Split and Ascent if they want to find a way to take down Cloud9. And guess what? They got both of those maps. And beyond that, they would be competitive with Cloud9 through the first two. Split would be up first. Great back and forth game in the first half. But then Envy found a way to streak to find six rounds in a row. Cloud9 would bounce back, but it wouldn't be quite enough as we would get to an overtime. And Envy would win both of the straight overtime rounds to win 14 to 12. Ascent would be the second map up. And Cloud9 had a great start. But Envy found ways to keep sneaking away defensive rounds with cheeky diffuse tactics that ended up giving them a little bit of a 50-50 first round. But Cloud9 able to win a couple of very pivotal economical rounds, giving them an edge and taking the map 13-8. So now Envy have to go to Bind, one of Cloud9's better maps to be sure. And it was a huge start for Envy as Cloud9, even though there were a handful of great individual rounds from Shinobi and Tens, they would not be able to fully make up the ground they needed to, where Envy from the defensive side would take the pistol, build the big cushion, and never let it go. 13-7, to and our first big, I would say, upset in the playoff bracket as Envy surprised Cloud9 and send them packing into the loser's bracket. The other two matches we had to consider, though, are T1 versus TSM and Immortals playing up against Gen G. For T1 and TSM, T1, I was sitting there saying that they, I think, are the more complete squad based on the mistakes that we kept on seeing for the retakes as well as the breaks for TSM on their offense. Well, for T1, they were not shutting down Wardell nearly as much as they needed to. The first map was a tight one. Split would be up first. T1 getting nine rounds defensively, just barely able to squeak out the win 13 to 11. But then from there... Wardell, Subrosa, they started to look absolutely incredible. Specifically, Subrosa, he played absolutely lights out today. 13 to 9 was the bind for map number two, and then 10 offensive rounds on ascent for TSM for the third map. They take that one 13 to 5. Immortals, Gen G, next one up for us. I had favored for Immortals in this one. I thought Gen G was looking good, but maybe not quite good enough to get past the polish of the Immortals. And that would show up pretty quickly as Immortals would find eight rounds in the first half on Haven, a very remarkable stat line, as they cruised their way to a 13 to 4 on map number one. Ascent would be up next. Things would be looking good for Immortals again. Starting off defensively, they take eight rounds, but their offense wasn't quite strong enough. We'd go to an overtime. And from there, Gen G took over a little bit as they were able to take two defensive rounds and then able to string together another offensive to win it 15 to 13 in an extended overtime. But then from there, we'd go to bind, and once again, Immortals would showcase that their prowess on hits and executes offensively too strong for Gen G. They take nine offensive rounds in the first half and close things out to another 13 to four. So, like I mentioned, there's only one round of winner's bracket, so we'll talk about Sentinels versus Envy and TSM versus Immortals when we get done recapping what happened in the lower bracket. Phase Clan, Cloud9, and how about FaZe Clan striking first against Cloud9 on a map that 
Honestly, I was a bit surprised that FaZe Clan was able to look as good as they did offensively. Nine massive rounds for FaZe on the attacking first half for Haven, really showcasing us that for FaZe Clan, they're learning this game at an astronomical rate, a terrifyingly strong rate. They are, their offense has been by far the weakest point of their entire weekend. For them to find nine rounds versus a very good Cloud9 team on Haven was impressive. It definitely bodes well for them in the future. The problem was they still had to play Cloud9 on maps like Ascent and Split, which were obviously a little bit more defensively favored. And while well, Cloud9 would absolutely have a day there, 13 to 8 on both the Ascent and the Split, including a number of great offensive first half for them. They had an eight round first half on the attack for Ascent and a seven round attacking half on Split. Definitely making things way too difficult for FaZe to come back. But even though FaZe leave us here, you have to be very inspired about what they were able to do in growth over the course of just a two day period. It definitely has me feeling hopeful about the potential of the squad moving forward. Gen G T1 would be up next, a very competitive series here where Gen G would just put together more special defensive holds than T1 could put together, unfortunately. In short, that's kind of the way it wrapped up. It was a very defensive-sided matchup. Nine rounds for Gen G on the ascent on their second half to close things out. 13 to 10 versus T1. And then on the back half for split, wasn't the greatest defensive half for them, only taking seven, but they put together six great offensive rounds, a very back and forth affair, but Gen G take both maps 13 to 10. So Cloud9, Gen G move on to the loser's bracket to face up against the loser of the matches that we need to predict. Sentinels going up against Team Envy. Was there enough shown today for Team Envy to sit there and say that they could surprise not just Cloud9, but also the Sentinels? I think that you can make an argument do you have a lot of ground to go off of, though? I don't think so. Sentinels is just looking like way too complete of a squad. The only time games are even remotely close is when they're starting off on very heavily defensive-sided maps like Split and Ascent, and they're starting off on offense first. That's the only time that they really are combated to with a close differential. This is still the better squad overall. I've got Sentinels taking Team Envy down 2-0. Yes, Mummy has been looking good on the Operator. Yes, for the most part, Akis has also been incredible. Really, the entire Envy squad has been looking incredible. The thing about the Sentinel squad is that they under understand your strengths and they reduce them to make them feel not nearly as positive as you might figure versus other squads. I've got Sentinels in this one. TSM versus Immortals. And there have been a lot of very scary moments for TSM throughout this entire bracket so far, whether it's the group stage or today versus T1 in the opening round of their playoffs. For Immortals, we really haven't had that same kind of consideration, not at least negatively. The problem here is when you see the resiliency of TSM be put together like it was today, I, they're terrifying. When Sabrosa is top fragging for his squad and Wardell is nowhere to be found and TSM is still winning, imagine what happens when Wardell is still actually popping off. I've got TSM in this one, 2-1. to one. I think Immortals can be clean and polished. If they can put together a good first offensive half on maps like Ascent or Split, kind of keep the pressure on TSM, they can steal a map. But I still think overall, if we see a Haven, I've got TSM super favored in that just because, again, if you give Wardell a chance to shine, I think he will. Those are the two predictions. Beyond that, though, the loser would play up against Cloud9 and Gen G. I know that Cloud9 you're feeling a little bit wishy-washy on because they lost to Envy and they had way too close of a series versus FaZe Clan, but they looked a little bit off, like they're trying to dance with two left feet or something like that. I don't see that being the case tomorrow. I feel good about Cloud9's potential coming into Saturday and being able to continue on with the lower bracket run. For Gen G, though... I don't know. There hasn't really been too many special moments that you look at for Gen G and say, this is what you expect constantly from Gen G. It's only a couple isolated moments, and I don't know if they're going to have the ability to beat any of the top four teams in the upper bracket right now when they play up against them tomorrow in their lower bracket matchup. So keep your eye on those kind of things, but I've got Sentinels getting past Team Envy, TSM getting past Immortals, and I've got Cloud9 moving through their lower bracket, although I think they could be tested again by any of the teams that get moved down to the lower bracket. So those are kind of the things to look out for again if you guys like the video please make sure you like the video subscribe on your way out if you're looking for more competitive valorant esports content right here on the channel with this valorant report series that i run and beyond that if you're looking to support try to get out there if you just post the link on the twitter or reddit or something like that i super appreciate that we're trying to build this community together and if you have any feedback let me know in the comment section down below what i could do better for you guys till the next video though hope you guys enjoy the games tomorrow and until then keep holding it down later later bye bye <laughs>